This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. You cannot serve. Welcome to Saddleback Sunday service. 好开心，我哋见到 Father Stephen 翻咗嚟咯。Oh, Father Stephen is back to us. 同你身边嘅新朋友弟兄姊妹打个招呼先。This is somebody next to you, and also um, uh, somebody you, maybe you don't know. 各位请坐。Please take a seat. 如果你第一次嚟到教会咧，你可以留意灯前面有 connection card， 你想知嘅都系写上去噶。If you would like to know something about the church, you can write down on the connection card and pass to us. 或者你想誒、呃、有人為你嘅需要代禱咧，完咗崇拜嘅時候，你可以嚟到台前，我哋嘅祈禱小隊會為你禱告。Or if you would like to have prayers, you can come over to the front of the stage after the service. 二十八日嘅 One Life campaign 咧，哇咁快已經走過啦。Our One Life campaign has passed so quickly. 我哋喺小組度聽到咧好多生命嘅轉化。We have heard a lot about the life transformations in the small groups。亦都知道大家對傳福音有一個新嘅理解喎。And we have a new understandings about evangelism。唔知你嘅得著係咩咧 ？What have you gained in the One Life campaign？ 教會咧係一個傳福音嘅教會嚟嘅。We are an evangelical church。所以我哋特別喺明安門外嘅走廊咧 set 咗一個大嘅風波。So we have a big phone board in the corridor outside the main hall. 另外咧，我哋都为我哋每个参加咗 One Life 小组嘅各位咧，预备咗一个 One Life 篇嘅。For each one of you who have joined this campaign, you will have a One Life pin. 呢两样嘢都系想提示我哋继续为我哋嘅 One Life 守望祈祷。This will remind us that we will need to continue to pray for our One Life. 你哋嘅小组组长问翻 CL 啊，就可以攞到噶啦。The small group host can ask for the pin from the CL. 不过我哋都相信大家都有叫过你嘅 One Life 翻嚟教会嘅。And we have maybe we have asked our One Life to back to come back to church. 不过有时人可唔可以回应上帝咧，都同佢嘅原生家庭有关系嘅。Sometimes when the person decide whether to come to church, it will depends on her or his life life journey. 我哋我哋都好关心咧，你同你嘅 One Life 成个生命成长嘅历程。We are concerned about the well-being and the wholeness of a person. So, when we come to the New Year, we can invite them to come back to the church next week. And next week, we will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We will have a talk about the family of origin. We are also a church that is care that cares about the community. Peace Box campaign 就我哋年度嘅社区大型服侍。Peace Box campaign is the largest um evangelical campaign in the Saddleback Church. 上星期同大家分享过一啲侍奉嘅一啲岗位。Last week we mentioned about the serving opportunities. 我哋已经收到超过一百个会友 sign up for serving 啦。We have received more than one hundred um people joining this serving. 
，有人咧系攞大价，有人咧全个小组一齐参与侍奉。There are even some people taking some annual leave and、uh, join with a small group。呢种侍奉同埋牺牲嘅精神咧，系值得好大嘅掌声鼓励嘅。Thank you for your dedication。依家开始咧，我哋继续。呼吁你继续可以将物资咧带翻嚟教会，直到下个礼拜日，我哋都仲收嘅。We encourage you to continue to bring back the donations until next Sunday。而喺侍奉上边咧，我哋依家咧特别喺三月三十一号嘅 Stacking Day， 我哋仍然需要侍奉人员嘅。On the Stacking Day, which is thirty first of March, we will have um、uh, we we still um have vacancies for the serving。鼓励你同埋你嘅小组咧一齐过嚟啊，一齐嚟参与呢个 Stacking Event。We encourage you and your small group to join together. But Peace Box 就唔只系净系侍奉嘅。Peace Box is not just about donation. 我哋仲有好多好有趣嘅游戏咧，有个 ceremony 都可以同大家一齐去玩嘅。We can have fun together and we will have a ceremony. 我所以咧今次咧教会特别预备咗一条片段咧，俾你同你嘅朋友亲戚去分享，邀请佢一齐去呢个 Peace Box ceremony 嘅。And we will have a video clip that is used for you to invite your family and friends to join the ceremony. 我哋一齐去片睇下。Let's watch. <音樂>好高兴 Peace Box 嚟到十周年啦！今年 Peace Box 嘅合作伙伴用心安排，喺四月一号、二号拣定咗荃湾广场，我哋要重演一个大型嘅砌口活动啊！我哋依家一齐嚟听下呢个砌口活动嘅设计意念啊！今日嘅主題係 grow， 我相信每個人嘅成長路徑同埋目的地都係唔同嘅。雖然呢四個字我哋用咗唔同嘅設計，高低大細都唔同，嚟到代表住。雖然我哋喺唔同嘅環境裏面，但係 peace walk 祝福裏面，我哋都係一齊行一齊成長嘅。現場仲有 AR、VR 嘅互動遊戲，玩完仲可以扭蛋添啊！約定你四月二號下晝三點喺荃灣廣場，一齊嚟 enjoy 呢個 celebration party 啦！ Peace Box Campaign 十年嚟見證好多生命嘅轉化，鼓勵你今年一齊嚟見證參與，用行動造就生命成長。依家開始嚟咗喺 Peace Box 嘅 YouTube Channel 揾到呢條片噶啦。You will find this video clip in the Peace Box YouTube Channel。擊個 share 就可以嗌埋你嘅朋友一齊去荃灣廣場 join in 我哋呢個 set。Ceremony 噶啦。Let's invite our family and friends to join this campaign and ceremony. The Peace Box 真正嘅意義咧，並唔只係物資捐贈嘅。But the meaning of the Peace Box is not just about the donation. 其實係一個機會，讓我哋去見證耶穌基督嘅美好。And it is time to witness the goodness of Jesus. 同埋讓一啲未信嘅人咧，喺個商場或者社區裏邊咧，發現到教會就係充滿住活力。充滿住喜樂嘅。And we can take this opportunity to show our、uh, our energy and our joy to the non-believers。我哋祈禱求主將我哋呢份嘅喜樂咧帶入去社區。We pray that God will help us to bring the joy to the community。讓人可以重新同佢再一次連結。So that they can be connected with Jesus。因為 Peace Box Campaign 嘅終點咧係人願意相信同埋認識耶穌基督。Because the final destination of the Peace Box is to lead people to Jesus. 而緊接住 Peace Box campaign 之後，就係我哋嘅復活節啦。Easter is coming back very soon. 大家都知啊，我哋 Cell Back Church 係以富有感染力嘅崇拜咧，作為我哋其中一個特色嘅。Our Cell Back Church service is full of energy and is is full of uh yeah uh the vitality. Yeah. 每年咧，我哋有一個叫 Night of Worship 咧，都係哇～即係即係社區裏邊一個大嘅焦點嚟嘅。Um, our um Easter night of worship is the big focus。今日好高興話俾你聽，我哋嚟緊嘅 night of worship 已經定咗喺四月七號嘅 Good Friday 夜晚七點半啦。Our um Easter night of worship will be on April seventh。真係咧，即係每次都好多人咧，好踴躍參與我哋呢個 Night of Worship 嘅。Every time many people join this。嚟緊星期四中午十二點咧，就正式開始接受登記㗎啦。Our registration will be open on、uh, the coming Thursday at、uh, twelve。校定個鬧鐘咯喎嚇，即係為你嘅朋友同埋為自己咧準備預備去搶飛啦。So please mark your schedule for yourself and for your friends。而除咗係呢個 Good Friday 之外咧，我哋復活節假今次咧，我哋會選定喺復活。正一四月九号咧，我哋会有三场嘅崇拜。
And we will also have our Easter service on the Easter Sunday, the 9th of April. The three services will be there. 好希望喺复活节正一里边咧，我哋同大家一齐经历主复活嘅大能。We would like to have a uh, uh, to experience together uh, to celebrate uh, the Jesus. Our Jesus is the risen Lord. 而喺度当中，我哋自己嘅生命都可以有一个新嘅属灵上嘅突破。And there will be a spiritual breakthrough for ourselves in this Easter. 好想为你同埋为以上一切嘅事情咧去代求祷告。We would like to pray for you and also what we mentioned just now. 我哋依家一齐低头祷告。Let's bow our heads. 亲爱天父啊，多谢你。Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. 多谢你呢个特别嘅时刻同我哋同在。Thank you for giving us this、uh, special time. 多谢你拣选我哋，俾我哋喺你嘅角度里边有份。Thank you, thank you for choosing us to be a part in your kingdom. 俾我哋有机会可以贡献我哋嘅时间、精力同埋资源喺你嘅角度当中。To allow us to give our time, our effort, and our resources to your kingdom. 天父啊，求你与每一个弟兄姊妹同埋会众同在。May you be present、um, with the people who、uh, who would like to serve you and to be with you。当佢哋心愿意去走出去侍奉同埋奉献嘅时候啊。When they are willing to step out of their comfort zone to give。主，求你嘅爱充满佢哋。May your love pour into their hearts。让佢先经历你完全嘅爱。To allow them to experience your goodness, 让佢哋分散嘅啲份爱系从你而嚟嘅 ，so that they can feel and to share with the others. 神啊，亦都求你祝福，祝福 Peace Boss Campaign 祝接触嘅每一个社区嘅生命。And may you also bless、um, the community, each one in the community. 当佢哋喺生活里边啊，有好多难阻嘅时候。Maybe in their lives there are lots of difficulties and challenges. 有有艰难，有唔明白嘅时候。Maybe there is something that they don't understand。最后求你使用 Peace Box 嘅每一个嘅活动。May you bless、um, every part of the Peace Box。或系透过嗰份嘅礼物啊。Maybe um, um, the gift of Peace Box。或系透过我哋商场嘅嗰个 ceremony。Maybe through the ceremony of Peace Box。或系透过一啲简单嘅互动游戏。Or maybe through the games。就系愿意你自己 reveal 你自己喺呢啲需要嘅人群当中。May you reveal yourself as your as their savior and as their king。就因为知道你系怜悯嗰个。We know that you are merciful。你爱我哋直到永远。You love us, we love us to the end。主让我哋喺今个 Peace Box Campaign 同埋复活节假里边见证你嘅大能。May you allow us to witness your power in the Peace Box and also the coming Easter。我多谢你，让我哋有份参与。Thank you for allowing us to witness your power and your mercy。我哋咁样祷告、交托，系奉靠主耶稣基督嘅名祈求。In Jesus' name we pray。Amen。Amen。喺经文里面话，凡有气息嘅都要赞美神。In Scripture it says that everything that has breath praise the Lord。今日想邀请大家用你哋嘅声音。用你哋嘅身體語言去讚美神。I would like to invite you all to use your voice, use your body language to praise the Lord today. You don't have to save it till you get to heaven. 你唔使去慳住慳住，等到去天堂嗰日先去讚美神。Worship God, praise God along the way. 我哋而家今日就去讚美神。Come on, let's stand. 一齊企起身。Let's praise the Lord together. Chance to worship, to lift high the greatest name. Not gonna save my voice for heaven. I'm not gonna wait. I won't hold back my hallelujah until we are face to face. I will give back my breath you've given. I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait. Singing, holy is the 
Amen. Come and Yeah. So what's the reason why we praise it? You know, there's a song called 10,000 Reasons, right? For us to bless the Lord. As I go to 10,000 reasons, we're not going to sing this. No, we're going to sing another song. But let's just pick some of the reasons in the scriptures why we should praise them. Okay? 
You, you may read this with us, okay? We can read it in English or, or, or Cantonese, whatever language that you're comfortable with, okay? Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercy. He fills my life with good things and my youth is renewed like the eagles. You know, see, they will always experience His forgiveness, His salvation, His healing, His transformation. We have seen all His saving, His redemption, His salvation. But one thing that we all experience in common, someone here may, maybe you can testify, I feared death before. Just like it's the end of everything here on earth. 有一样嘢我哋一齐都面对过嘅就系，我曾经好怕死亡，因为死亡就代表住喺呢个世界上面一一切嘅终结。But now I don't fear death， 但今日唔再怕啦，唔再怕死亡啦。Because the, co- the curse of death has left me， 死亡嘅咒助离开咗我。You know it cannot threaten me， 佢唔可以威胁我。My future is heaven， 我嘅将来系天堂。My story will start a new chapter。And I will step into eternity with God and those who believe in Him. 死咗之后，嗰个系一个新嘅开始，同阿神一齐，同我哋弟兄一齐。So it's because Jesus has overcome death. He is risen. 因为耶稣战胜咗死亡，佢复活嘅主 ，and He won the victory over death for us. 系为我哋战胜死亡 ，and saved us from fear to having a living hope. 让我哋能够唔怕死，仲要有一个永活嘅盼望。So I just want to sing these two songs with you, two songs, and to, rem- to remember the good things He does for us. What did He do for us? His victory, His goodness, His singly, His amazing. So, come on, let's do this together. So they knew. 
要清早，要对演应许，坟墓里走出，捉死身躯，破碎了寂静，思考的选择，死不可以再等于终结。Come on， 那破晓清。要兑现应许，坟墓里走出，苏醒身躯。Everything He has created, that all that I am, praise the Lord. Hallelujah! 神配受极大赞美。Come on, Hallelujah!
到每晚安枕，我都歌唱你的恩典与爱。过往里你相信。谁近你会这么近？仍越过你是我苦，和你作我自己，这生中。Finish the series， 我哋嘅 One Life 完咗啦，唔系我哋 One Life 仲喺度，即系 I mean One Life series 完咗。<笑> We're going to start a new series, praying for breakthrough， 我哋有新嘅系列。So Pastor Andy will go to teach us， so excited， right？ But before that， there's something very surprising， is Pastor Andy has something special for our Hong Kong campus， 
Pastor Andy 有啲特別嘢同 Hong Kong campus 講嘅。And you're going to hear a good news there. 你會有一個有一個好消息喺裏邊嘅。OK， Pastor Andy。I want to say hi to our incredible Hong Kong campus.、Uh, I just keep hearing great stories of God's faithfulness, and as you are spreading out, people are moving to different parts of the world. That you are taking the message of Jesus from Hong Kong to other cities and places in the world. Just really exciting and incredible. That's because the boldness and faith of your staff, Stephen and Rosanna, and what God is doing through you is impacting the entire world. And by the way. Uh, I hear you're prepping for a 10-year celebration this fall. I don't know all the details, but I do know it's going to be unbelievable. And Stacy and I can't wait to be there with you to celebrate your 10-year anniversary. I want you to know I'm so proud of you. I'm so grateful for you,、uh, and I cannot wait to meet you guys in person today. God's going to use this message and this series as we get ready for Easter. I'm praying that God would give you a sense of boldness、uh, to invite and bring your friends to Easter services. That many of you who have never gone public with your faith in Jesus would do that through baptism on Easter weekend.、Uh, most importantly, as we prepare, know that I'm praying for you. I know that I love you, and praying that you're blessed by today's message. Welcome to all of our incredible international campuses. We're so thrilled that you're joining us today. I'm so excited because right now, for these next few weeks, we're going to be joining together with our whole church on a journey leading up to Easter. We're starting a brand new message series called "Praying for Breakthrough." Now, recently here in the United States of America, on the football field, not like football as you play all over the world, but American football. I understand it really doesn't make sense to call it football when you don't use your foot very much.、Uh, but American football, there was this one guy、uh, on the field. His name was Demar Hamlin, and Demar Hamlin was on the field. He had cardiac arrest.、Uh, he actually was dead for a few moments, and then they revived him back to life. But there was a moment、uh, over the next several weeks where Demar was actually not responsive, and then people were praying for him. And all over the internet, people were saying, "Pray for Demar, pray for Demar." And maybe you've had something like this happen in your country, where an athlete or something happened at a national level that the whole nation was praying. And isn't it interesting how people who are not religious or seemingly not spiritual will say, "Let's pray together." In fact, people will often say in conversation, even if they're not religious, they'll say, "I'm praying for you."、Uh, when you're sick, they'll say, "I'm praying for you." When you're going through a tough time, somebody might say, "I'm praying for you." And prayer is a natural response as as humans. There's a longing inside of us to connect with a power that's greater than ourselves, and that's placed there by God. Prayer is the essential ingredient that God uses in communication between us and His heart. So for these next few weeks, what we want to do is we want to have a different approach with prayer. Because maybe one of the phrases you've heard when it comes to prayer is somebody saying something like this:、uh, "If nothing else works, try prayer."、Uh, your marriage didn't work, try prayer. Your your job didn't work, try prayer.、Uh, you you couldn't lose that weight, pray. And sometimes when we we say that, we actually have this mindset that's playing into that statement, and it's prayer is a last response or a last resort for us. And maybe you've been conditioned to think that way, like prayer is a last resort. When nothing else works, try prayer. But I want to flip that, and I want to have a different mindset personally. And I want to pray that we would have a different mindset. And the mindset is really coming through a question. And the question is, what if prayer could become my first response instead of my last resort? What if prayer could become the first thing that we do when we're sick? What if prayer could become the first thing that we do when we're trying to make a big decision? And what if prayer could become the first thing that we do whenever we're stuck in any area of our lives? Isn't it true that we all get stuck? Like we get stuck personally in relationships, we get stuck in bad patterns or habits, or perhaps you've gotten stuck when it comes to making a difference with your life or your mission. So this series is going to be about getting unstuck. And how God uses prayer to break through in areas of our lives, and we're going to break it down in three different ways.、Uh, but this phrase is important. Whenever I am stuck, I will start with prayer. That's what we want to focus on this series: is when we get stuck, starting with a mindset or a heart 
of prayer. So the journey will be broken down in three parts. One, we're going to talk about personal breakthrough and praying for personal breakthrough in areas in our lives where we currently feel stuck. Second week, maybe there's a relationship where you feel stuck. And we're going to talk about praying for relational breakthrough. Breakthrough in a marriage or breakthrough in a relationship with a roommate or perhaps somebody that you work with that God would give you breakthrough. And then in the third week, we're going to talk about praying for missional breakthrough. Breakthrough with God using your life to make a difference. I believe this series is going to be so helpful. Our team has put together a 21-day journey that you can find online. I'll tell you how to get that at the end of my message. Uh, And we're going to be praying together collectively as a church as we head towards Easter. I believe God's going to use this message series for our church to catalyze a movement of his spirit in and through our lives. And I'm excited for what he's going to do. But I want to start today at the front end of my message uh, with a little bit of teaching about the subject of prayer. Because there's a lot in our culture, uh, a lot all over the world that people will say about prayer that perhaps is not true. And I want to begin with some of Jesus' initial words about the subject of prayer. Jesus was so consistent with his prayers uh, that his disciples would ask him, Jesus, teach us how to pray. They noticed that Jesus was constantly in prayer with his heavenly father, that it was a part of his everyday flow. And I love in Luke chapter 11, how his disciples, as they were watching Jesus pray, it says, once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as you taught John's disciples to pray, or John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus said, this is how you should pray. So notice his disciples want to know, how do I pray? And Jesus is going to launch into a very practical description of how to pray. He says, Father, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy and may your kingdom come soon. Now, Jesus goes on to give more uh, specifics of how to pray, but I'm just going to stop with these couple of verses because there's so much just in these few statements from Jesus. Uh, In fact, if you'll go back, Jesus says this, Father, may your name be kept holy and may your kingdom come soon. Now, the first thing that Jesus is saying is that prayer is a direct line to God. It's a direct line of communication between us and the creator of the universe, the God who created you and formed you, who knows you, who wants a friendship with you. Prayer is your direct line of communication with him. Uh, recently, Stacy and I, we went on a trip into the mountains. And so we stayed in this small little house that we rented for a couple of days in the mountains. And there was no cell phone reception. Now, perhaps you've been somewhere recently where there's no cell phone reception. There's a little bit of anxiety that you might feel because you're like, our message is coming in. Is somebody trying to get a hold of me? Uh, but everything worked out just fine. Uh, One time I noticed though, as I was coming down the mountain back to the place where I had cell phone reception, uh, all these messages started coming in. It's like, bing, 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 bing. And the messages are showing up on my phone as I had reception or my line is cleared up again. I can get communication. And isn't it true sometimes in our world where we are constantly on, we have constant access to all the information that we could want, All of our friends could get a hold of us whenever they want to get a hold because there's a direct line that sometimes all of that noise can prevent us from stepping into the access that we have direct line to God. In fact, I even noticed when I was on that mountain that my mind and my heart was more focused on God when I was less available to all the noise. Now, you can't always go away to a mountain to be able to pray like prayer has to happen in every moment of our lives. But I believe when, when I recognize, when you recognize that you have direct access to God, uh, that you don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to call your pastor and say, will you pray for me? You don't have to go to your small group post. You can directly go into the throne room of God right now in this moment. You have a direct line to God. I believe when we understand that, we'll pray more and we'll pray differently. Now, Jesus also teaches some other important components here. And he tells us to pray to our Father who is in heaven. And then he says it actually with a statement right before, hallowed be your name. He's saying, Father, your name is revered. Your name is holy. Your name is set apart. 
So he's talking about the, the tone and the approach as we pray. And he's making this important point that what prayer involves is both reverence and relationship. So your heavenly father wants a father-son, father-daughter relationship with you. And he's also the creator of the universe. And so when you pray, you're holding these two things together to understand he's powerful and mighty. He's near and close. Prayer involves reverence and relationship. And then one last component I want to highlight. As we understand God is a loving father and a high king, uh, we begin to understand that prayer helps me or helps us experience God's plans and purposes for our lives. James 5, 16 and 17 highlights this, says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you would be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was just as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, no, none fell for three and a half years. So I want you to imagine this, that God used the prayers of Elijah. He prayed for three and a half years for no rain to fall. Then he prayed that rain would come and rain fell. fell. God answered his prayers for a drought. God answered his prayers for rain. And God used Elijah's prayers to turn a nation back to his heart. And what James, the earthly brother of Jesus, is saying is there's great power in prayer. God uses your prayers to accomplish his plans and purposes, both in and through your life. And the more we understand this, I believe, the more we'll pray, and the more we'll pray the way that God wants us to pray. So prayer is a tool. It's a tool that God uses. It's a direct line to him. It's about reverence and relationship. And it helps us experience God's plans and purposes for his life. This little phrase has helped me. Uh, God does things when we pray that he doesn't when we don't. God does things in our lives when we pray that he doesn't when we don't. And so I want to demonstrate from the Bible, how do you pray for breakthrough in your own life today? I want to talk about how do you pray in that area where you currently feel stuck? So what I'd like for you to do is I want you to think about an area of your life where you, you currently feel like you just can't make the progress that you want to make. Uh, maybe it's an addiction. I, I feel like this sometimes. There's area, there are areas of my life that it, there are patterns that I want to change, and I just keep going back to the same patterns. Or perhaps there's a thought process that you just feel like you can't change. Or maybe there's a heart attitude that you you know you want to be done with and you want to put it in the past, but it feels so hard to put that area in the past. Maybe some of you, you don't even know what that area is. Like you, you, it's not very clear where you feel stuck. But I want to encourage you to entertain what is that area where you currently feel stuck. I'll be frank with you, the area where I feel like I find myself stuck over and over and over again, uh, that I actually have been filtering through this praying for breakthrough myself is I have a tendency to overcommit. Like I take on so much stuff and my overcommitment will overstretch me and it'll leave me at a place where I have very little margin in my life with time and energy. And when one thing comes in uh, that I wasn't expecting, it's like everything has to scramble because there was no margin. So I'm praying through that overcommitment personally. As I share these principles, I'll even walk through specifically how God is using praying for breakthrough in my own life, praying through God to help me with my tendency to overcommit. Now, I want to look at two passages of Scripture as we focus on praying for breakthrough. I want to start with Psalm 139, and this is a psalm that King David writes. And you might go back to this psalm sometime this week and read through and pray through it. And we're going to look there for the first half, and then we're going to look at Psalm 51 for two more prayers. And these practical prayers, I believe, will help you get a measure of breakthrough in your life. Psalm 139, David writes, he says this, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going and my lying down, and you are familiar with all my ways. Now, I don't know if that creeps you out a little bit, but it is a little bit creepy to think about 
the nature of how God works and he's familiar. Like before I sit down or kneel down on the ground, God knows, oh, you're, you're gonna kneel down on the ground. Or before I take a step, God knows I'm gonna take a step. It's just, a, a, it's wild to think about the knowledge of God that he has. There's not a thought that goes through my mind that God doesn't know about. There's not a word that I don't speak. He doesn't know before it comes out. That's the sovereign knowledge of God for every human being on the face of the planet, which is just mind-boggling. David is going to describe this here. He says, uh, before a word is on my tongue, you, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your ha- hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful, too lofty for me to attain. Now, it could be a little bit creepy when you think about it, but actually David takes it one step further and it's comforting when you begin to think about that the sovereign God of the universe is also very personal. And so he knows the words you're gonna speak. He knows when you're gonna stand up and sit down. He knows when you close your eyes at the end of the day. He knows when you open up your eyes the next day for the following day. But I love the, the personal nature of this phrase that David says, and you lay your hand upon me. And it just reminds me as a dad that sometimes I'll come in and I'll lay my hands on my kids' heads and I'll kiss them on the forehead or I'll pray over them. And there's something so fatherly about this image of a creator who loves us personally and lays his hands on our heads. And he says, I love you, you're my child. David says, this is just mind boggling to me. It's too much for my mind, I can't really fully comprehend it, but I'll try to comprehend it. I'll try to understand it. And as he goes on, he describes in verse 13, I'm skipping forward, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. You might turn to your neighbor right now and say, I am wonderfully complex. Just do it right now. Just say, I am wonderfully complex. Some of us are complicated. Actually, David says, all of us are complicated. We're complex. And your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. I love these verses. You watched me. Think about this, the God of the universe. And think about yourself through these verses. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious your thoughts about me, O oh God, they cannot be numbered. Now, I remember when I was in science class in high school and college, they would describe what was happening to a baby as the baby was being formed in the womb from conception and what was happening at one, the first moment and then a month and two months and all the way to nine months. And when you layer this on this particular scripture and you realize the hand of God that is at work in the womb, when you were being formed in your mother's womb, God was forming you and shaping you. And I love this phrase because sometimes in our culture, There are unintended pregnancies. Like we see this all over the world. But did you know there might be an unintended pregnancy, but there is never an unintended person. There's not a human being on the face of the planet. There is not a moment of conception that was not intended by the sovereign God of the universe. This is why the babies that are inside of the womb of women should be protected and cared for. This is why you, when you were inside of a womb, should be protected and cared for. That's how much God loves every single human being on the face of the planet. This is so important for us to understand on a personal level. This is significant for us to understand on a cultural level as Christians, if you read the Bible, to understand the value that God places on human life. And it's too much for us to comprehend. Sometimes it's, it's confusing to understand even personally, could I be that loved by God? Could a baby and a womb be that known and that loved by God? And the answer is yes, that's what the Bible teaches. So Christians should care about life all the way from conception, should protect life all the way from conception. And as we do, it should play into how we see ourselves. 
how we see our own prayers. Now, I know I've opened up a whole can of a big conversation that I don't have the time to fully dive into, but I do want to address what the Bible teaches here because the more value we place on human life, the more like God we become. And as David describes further his own journey, I I want you to hear his words. He says this, he says, "Um, you, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious your thoughts about me, O God, they cannot be numbered. Now notice this last line that David finishes this psalm with. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts and point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. The first prayer I want you to write down in your notes is that God can search us. The prayer is for God to search me. All of us um, have had experiences where we've gone into a doctor and maybe you had a cold or flu or you had some pain that you didn't know where it came from. And if you will, again, we love doctors and this is not true for every doctor, but there are some doctors that when you sit down in their office, they're like, yeah, yeah, I've seen this. I know they're flipping through the chart. They know your, your sickness. And it's like, okay, what medicine should I give you? And you're out. And maybe you've had that image in your mind like a doctor that just searches you, you're out. Uh, But when it comes to God, I want you to have a different image in mind. I want you to imagine a really good doctor. And somebody comes in and they sit down with that doctor. And that doctor looks that person in the eye, asks a few really good diagnostic questions. How how long have you been sick? Tell me more about the pain. And as that doctor works, he's searching to understand what's happening on the inside, what's happening with that person's body. The prayer of search me is you and I coming before a God that has the capacity to search us with the knowledge that he has of our minds, the knowledge that he has of our hearts when we sit, when we rise, the knowledge he has from our creation and conception in the womb, all of that combined with his love coming to him and saying, search me, search me, God and know what's on the inside. Help me begin to see. I want to encourage you this week to pray this prayer. Search me, God, and begin to reveal to me what's on the inside. Now, this search me prayer is in conjunction with the second part of it, which is show me. He says, David says, as he says that God search me and show me, he says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. He's saying, saying, show me what's on the inside. And as you do this, I want to encourage you. I did this this week as I was praying through these prayers. I pulled out a journal and I started with my prayer of where do I feel stuck in my journey spiritually? Where do I, where do I feel stuck in my relationship with God? And as I begin to pray through my prayer of overcommitment, I ask God, show me how this is impacting me. And so as you search me, show me what is underlining or underneath this overcommitment in my heart. And I began to see dots connect. There were conversations that God used for me. Uh, There were fears that God began to expose on the inside of my heart as I wrestled through my prayer of overcommitment. And what God will do, I love even how the Bible says that God's love drives out fear. God will help us get to the source of what's underneath the problem where we feel stuck in our lives. So it might be anger. And you're saying, God, show me where that anger comes from. Maybe there's a bitterness that God wants to reveal. Uh, Perhaps there's an addiction that you keep returning to. And as you pray through, God might show you in that addiction that there's a loneliness or there's something that you're trying to, a pain that you're trying to fill. I love the way that God is gracious, the Holy Spirit works with us as we pray and we seek his leadership in areas where we feel stuck. Sometimes when you're praying for God to show you, he may show you some steps that you can begin to take. He might show you that you could go to something like a small group and find support. He may reveal to you that you need to reach out for the kind of help that uh, somebody can come alongside you. Here at Saddleback, if you go to our website, saddleback.com care, we have all kinds of resources. 
He might show you that you can take the step to get connected with Celebrate Recovery, with habits, hurts, and hangups from your past to be able to get the community around you and journey together for the kind of healing deep within your soul. But as you say, show me, God, God will show you some steps that you can begin to take. Now, this search me and show me are two powerful ways to begin to pray for breakthrough. But I've got some bonus, uh, some bonus conversation, some extra credit, if you will, for these last few moments from Psalm 51. So you could stop right now. You could take those two prayers and they would help you. But if you'll take Psalm 51 and what David prays there, I believe it will lead to even more breakthrough in these areas that we're praying for. Psalm 51, David uh, is actually going through a crisis himself. He's made a really bad mistake. Uh, he's made a decision to sleep with another man's wife. He's committed adultery, and her name is Bathsheba. He does it in a horrible way. Uh, he ends up trying to cover it up. He kills Bathsheba's husband. He does it very forcefully. He misabuses his power. It's, it's a horrible worst moment of David's life up until that point. And in Psalm 51, God stirred in his heart a measure of repentance, and he's coming back to repent for his sin. And I want you to notice his words in Psalm 51. He says, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stains of my sin and wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. I want you to hear in him the urgency, the need for somebody to save David from his sin. I want you to feel his angst internally of like, I have, I've put my life in this horrible place of ruin. God, have mercy on me. I don't deserve your mercy. I need your help. For I recognize my rebellion and it haunts me day and night. He's saying, I can't sleep. What I've done, I've, I'm ruining my life. Against you and against you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight, God. You will be proved right in, in what you say and your judgment against me is just. Now notice for David, he's got both an understanding of, of God's love and God's justice coming together, asking for God to help him. And he's praying and he's getting to this place where he needs somebody to rescue him from his sin, rescue him from his condition. And that's a third prayer for breakthrough. It's God, rescue me. Rescue me from the mess that I've made with my own life. Rescue me from this pattern that I cannot get out of. There's an urgency in these words in David's heart. God, I need you to intervene on my behalf. I read this story this last week in the Wall Street Journal uh, there was this man by the name of Francois, Elvis Francois, and he had been hired to paint a boat off the coast of Dominican. So he goes on this boat and he starts to paint it. And while he was painting, a strong wind comes up and pushes him out to sea. And he's scrambling, trying to save himself as he's being pushed out to sea. And as he's got all of his materials to paint, he takes out his paintbrush and he writes the word help on his boat so that somebody might see he's, he's actually not just out for like a, uh, just an afternoon drift to enjoy the sunshine. He's, he's been pushed out to sea. And as he was pushed out to sea, he starts scrambling around to see what's in his boat. Uh, he notices that there's some ketchup. Uh, he notices that he can take that ketchup and he starts to conserve that ketchup day after day for 24 days. He's there out to sea, not knowing if he's ever going to be found. Just a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of ketchup. And at the end of 24 days, uh, another boater notices the word help alongside of the boat and rescues this man. And I want you to imagine the angst that he felt day after day, knowing that he could not save himself. He needed help. The cry for mercy, the cry for rescue is simply you painting on the side of your boat to God. Help, I need your mercy. I cannot fix my own problems in my own power. I need you to break through. I need you to rescue me. There's a joy when you're rescued, when you realize, you and I, when we realize we need a savior and he can restore us. And that leads to this final prayer after a prayer for rescue is a prayer in Psalm 51 when David prays, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. 
Do not banish me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and make me willing to obey you. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And the final component of this prayer for breakthrough is a prayer, God, restore me. Give me new joy. Restore to me connection with your heart. I need you to fill me. And it reminds me or it makes me think of that man who was rescued at the first meal that he had. He had oatmeal and some tea. And the article talked about that replenishment after he had been rescued. Like he'd come back on another boat and he had a meal for the very first time. And his senses like came back to life again as he was filled up physically. God is able to do that through the power of the Holy Spirit when we return to fill our souls, our minds, to restore us, to give us our joy back, to give us our purpose back, to give us the power that we need to live the life that he's asked us to live. And so I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you to step in to the reality of your need for God and to invite him to restore you. Some of you, you need a restoration, a breakthrough of strength. Some of you need a restoration of joy in your life. You're all duty all the time, all transaction in your relationships with God and your relationship with others. And God is saying today, I want you to be restored to relationship with me. I'm so grateful that we have a God that is loving, kind, merciful, near, present, a God who has paid the price for our sins so that we can be forgiven, so that we can be restored. There's a statement in your notes. I want to encourage you to write this down. My relationship with God is the most important part of my life. I believe this to the core of my being, not just for me, but for you. When your relationship with God is not right, nothing in your life is right. When your relationship with God is missing, everything is missing. And God wants to be the centerpiece of your life. Any barrier to my relationship with God is a big deal. If it stands between me and God, it's a very big deal. And so I got to deal with whatever is that barrier between me and God whenever I notice it. And today this prayer for breakthrough is a turning from whatever was in the way between us and God. It could be a relationship with somebody that you know you shouldn't be dating. It could be a way of thought that you know God wants to move you out of. It could be a habit that you need to get free of and you've gotten comfortable with that condition. It could be greed. It could be lust. It could be pride. It could be selfishness. It could be any hard attitude that stands between you and God. It's not worth it. Separation between you and your creator is not worth anything in this world. And so the prayer for breakthrough is to come back and say, God, show me what it is. Reveal to me what's on the inside. Search me, show me, rescue me, and restore me. And I believe if you'll do that, God will show you what's on the inside. And he'll rescue you from what is keeping you back. And he'll restore you to the life that he's created you to live. I want to invite you to pray those prayers. You might take Psalm 51 this week and Psalm 139 and just meditate on it and let it sink into your heart at a deeper level so that you can fully live into the life that God has created you to live. But I also, also want to invite you to take two very practical steps. I want to invite you today to say, I will make a commitment every day for the next 21 days leading into Easter to pray. I will pray personally every day between now and Easter, and I'll set aside 15 minutes. Our team worked really hard to make a devotional for us that we can put into play in our life. That devotional every day, you can get through the app. You can also get online when you take your next steps today. You can sign up for that. And I wanna encourage you to sign up today to be a part of our 21-day journey where we're gonna be praying together, but we're also gonna be journeying introspectively of what God might speak to us. Every day there'll be just a short devotional. You can do it in less than five minutes and then you can pray yourself. There'll be guided prayers and we wanna resource you to help you begin to pray. I wanna encourage you today to make that commitment to pray. The second one is to pray for your church. So as I said at the beginning of the message, we're moving towards Easter and we're believing God for a great season of harvest, of life change, 
of people stepping across the line to give their lives to Jesus. And as you pray over these next 21 days, God will use your prayers in big ways to change people's lives. But we're launching something that we're so excited about called the Pray 24-7 Initiative. So starting this weekend, our goal is now around the clock to have people praying in 30-minute segments. We're an international church. We have tens of thousands of people that can pray. And if every person just said, I'll pray for 30 minutes between now and Easter, and we started this habit, we could enter into a reality, a vision that God has put in my heart for our church, a God, a vision that God has put in so many people's hearts for our church to pray boldly for him to move in our generation. God uses breakthrough kind of prayer when it comes to making a difference, that kind of prayer that breaks through with his mission. God blesses a church that prays diligently. And right now, Saddleback Church, with vision, I wanna call you, I wanna invite you, I wanna challenge you to be a praying church, to pray boldly that God would use us to change a generation and reach the world with his love. And we can do this individually by saying, I'll pray for 30 minutes. I will sign up to be a part of this round the clock pray 24 seven initiative. We have a vision that one day we'll be able to look back and say for the last 20 years, Saddleback Church has been praying nonstop for the accomplishment of God's great commission here on planet earth. How awesome would it be, a part, to be great to be a part of that vision to see all over the world God's kingdom coming and him using our prayers to make that happen. You can do that today, right now, by signing up to pray for a 30-minute slot. Uh, you can do that online. You can do it through the app. All of these resources, as you take that step right now to sign up for 30 minutes of prayer, I believe God is going to bless it in a powerful way. Now, as we wrap up our time together, I wanna invite you to join me in a prayer specifically around Psalm 139, that we might respond to what God is doing. And I wanna read David's words over you as we conclude this message. Psalm 139 and verse 23. Listen to David's words. If you'll close your eyes and bow your head with me for just a moment. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Will you pray that with me now? Father, we pray that you would search us and you would help our hearts turn to you, to walk with you in obedience to your commands. We repent of our selfish ways, our prideful ways, and we choose God to be fully available to you. God, bring breakthrough in our lives, breakthrough through our lives. And God, let this moment, as we collectively as a church step forward to pray more, as we step forward to pray individually for these next 21 days, God, let this moment be a moment that you use in a powerful way as we head into Easter. God, I pray that there would be many people that take the step to be baptized this Easter. Many people that say yes to your encouragement to be a part of what you're doing through this church. We love you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. I pray that this church will go to every one of you to pray for Psalm 51 and 139 in this time. I hope that you will be able to pray for this 為用這個詩篇51同埋139篇為祈禱。And also pray for the baptism. You know we got the baptism on the April 8th. April 8th. 我們在在父節前,我們會有浸禮,浸禮會在父節的4月8號進行. Pray for you. Really pray for you and pray for the friends for the baptism. 真的很希望你為你身邊的朋友祈禱,為他守望了很久的祈禱。Baptism is a revival day。真的是一個很復興的日子。I would like to see so many people baptized in the Christmas in the in the, in the Easter time。我希望能夠真的見到好多朋友能夠真的藉著復活節的日子重新得力,能夠將揾翻呢個 
上帝嘅呢個救恩，揾翻呢個救，即係揾翻呢個救恩，揾翻呢個好重要、好重要嘅信息。And also, I want to show you on the twenty-one days devotion that you can download by yourself. 你學大家就係出呢、这個出呢個 screen 啦，就係呢個二十一日嘅禱告。呢、这個禱告係能夠幫助大家二十一日。去幫助大家能夠復興你哋，能夠進行呢個祈禱。And also this QR code will be can you show on the QR code 啊，大家睇睇呢個 QR code。Because this twenty one days devotional will be helping you to focus into your prayer life. You can go full for that. Focus on your prayer life so that you can attach attach before the Easter. So that you can really go for it. 大家呢個能夠睇到呢個，都能夠幫助大家能夠呢二十一日入邊禱告，直到我哋嘅復活節。呢二十一日嘅禱告，每日都有新嘅，每日都係能夠俾到你大家一個動力，能夠俾到你哋一個清晰嘅方向，為乜嘢祈禱 ？Before Easter, I want definitely want you to pray for and on behalf of the church. 我希望呢二十一日。我哋就係能夠響復活之前，能夠為咗大家，即係準備定你哋嘅心，幫助代表你哋嘅教會嚟一齊為呢啲 One Life 祈禱。This is the biggest preparation for Easter。你知唔知響復活之前，我最大準備唔係宣傳，唔係乜嘢，就係、是、祈禱。Prayer is the biggest preparation for the Easter。祈禱就係我哋復活節入邊。最大最大嘅準備 ，I really like to you and so that your one life can be soften。你知唔知啊？你哋咁樣祈禱，令我幫助你嗰個 one life， 幫助解開佢嘅心鎖，令我將佢軟化，能夠接受福音。One of the book is called Pray, Eat and Love。有本書叫做 Pray, Eat and Love， 即係祈禱、食嘢同埋愛啊。I want to show you a video。On my trip to Manchester, let's see. Father, I know today is your day. Every one of us is preparing for ourselves to receive the vision today. I believe that tonight we will have someone. We will have someone who will look into your plan to plan this church wholeheartedly. Thank you for your calling for us and give us a vision. To do this on time, pray for Manchester. This is a place that we need. We need to glorify you in a great way. Therefore, tonight we need to depend on you. Please protect us. Please provide for us. For the those who come here to listen to the message, thank you, Lord. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Walking around these walls. I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won. For you have never. I'm not afraid. 
，嚟多陣嘅時候過多陣，過多一兩年，香港人有好大嘅神觀，我好急教打電話嘅時候就最怕失呢個，呢事發生啦，我哋點樣去？將我哋咁好嘅福音、咁好嘅盼望傳俾佢哋，能夠當信主耶穌基督，求上帝祝福帶領呢個事。多謝，其實我交託，我我係呼求我主耶穌基督嘅名。I'm very happy to see that a lot of people, quite a few of people, come from Brit, come from UK, from different part of the world, and, and drive to Manchester to join the Wisdom Night. 我真係好開心見到好多弟兄姊妹由英國嘅唔同嘅部分一齊去去到呢個 Manchester 嚟，我同佢一齊做呢個 Wisdom Night. 呢個 Wisdom Night is a vision on commitment. 呢、这個呢、这個會算啊，係全部都係講啊，我點樣投入落去，委身落去。Do you know that the Cantonese Church in UK is grow by a few times, a few times, not a not a fraction of that, a few times of attendance for the last couple of months。你知唔知道上 UK 成個英國入邊所有嘅華人唔係華人啊，係廣東話教會。係增長係倍增啊，係倍增。Some of the church I've been visiting from Reading to Birmingham to to Manchester to London to any to I've been to many churches. Every church been grown by at least two to four times to six times. 你知唔知真係好多華人教會即係由雷丁去到 Birmingham 至到 Manchester 落翻嚟倫敦，所有都話增長幾倍啊！幾倍啊！係 ，This is the time for us to build to plant the church。呢個就係我哋嘅時間，我哋要建立呢間教會。我我哋唔係建立一間教會。We are bringing a church revival for London, for UK and Manchester。你知唔知我哋係需要？我哋真係藉住呢個機會，我希望能夠帶嚟復興，唔單止俾倫敦。俾 Manchester， 俾整整個英國嘅教會。Through the time, I fully feel that the church in England is definitely need help from other sides of the world。我真係好覺得，好感受到，倫敦係真係需要，英國係真係需要，有其他嘅教會一齊支持嘅幫助，嚟建立更多、更多、更多、更多、更多嘅教會。I believe that. We are one of them. 我相信我哋係其中一個。We really want to join hands in this place. 我希望能夠一齊嘅祝福，一齊彰顯呢個力量。We decided. I know that when I spill it out, I know that this is very tough, very tough. 我知道我講出嚟都好驚，我自己都驚。I believe that we are going to plan. Celebrate, celebrate Vancouver in in August, and plan celebrate Manchester in September. I believe, if God grants us the wish, we will go to Vancouver for the eighth Sunday of the church, and Manchester for the ninth Sunday of the church. We want to see the wave of growth, a wave of evangelism. Take place in these two places. 我希望能够使到福音能够真系彰显向呢两个地方，而唔系得个讲字。And one thing I need you, I need you, I need you. 但系有一样嘢我系需要你哋做。In the coming six months, I want you first to pray for this project, to pray for these two places. 第一樣嘢你要投入啊！你哋一定要，你哋教會一部分，你哋一定要投入，就係、是、你哋為呢件兩件事祈禱，為呢兩個地方嘅祈禱。Number two, if you can take one week or two weeks off, I want you to pay a visit to these two places, either one. 希望你哋能夠一個禮拜、兩個禮拜嘅假期，攞假舊攞假唔緊要嘅
，一齊攞架去到一係去温哥華，同埋去 Manchester 呢兩個地方，見證呢兩個堂嘅發生。I don't want to sit here and observe these two places, these two churches. I want you to participate in t h e r e and so that you can join hands with full forces. 我希望你哋得齊嚟到，唔係喺度食花生，真係喺度參與落去，能夠做呢兩間堂會嘅嘅好重要嘅幫助。I know that this is God's plan。我知道呢個上帝計劃。A lot of people asking me, a lot of people asking me, a lot of people asking me。我全路上面好多人都為我身體祈禱，好多人都問候我，好多人都見證。我成日知道 ，one thing I know。If I can use my life in this time, I try to pull the best of it. 如果有人喺度問我點解咁辛苦咁去到嗰度，我真係問翻：如果我仲有一刻生命，我就願意完全付出嚟建立呢兩間堂會。Because this is needed. 呢個真係需要。This is the time that we can do something good for God. 呢個係個好好嘅時間。能夠傳傳遞上帝嘅福音俾需要嘅人。It's not, it's not this time, but the time。呢個唔係呢個時間，亦就係嗰個時間。I want, really want to use prayer to conclude this message and conclude this action。我真係好希望用禱告托住我哋呢個行動，托住我哋所有一切。Let's pray for it。Please stand. Please let's stand. Let's stand for it and pray. 我一齐站立啊 ，OK。Dear Father, thank you for that. 上帝真系好感谢你嘅爱。I know that you love us so much. 上帝，我知道你好好爱我哋。When we see the calling from 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 Vancouver, from Manchester. This is a deep calling from evangelism for your God, for you, for the some of the pin non-believer there. 所以我真係好感受到，當去温哥華同 Manchester 兩個地方一齊見證到好多機會。For those who are immigrant, in the deep two years, they are not settled down. They are looking for you. They are looking for you to come meet to them. 所以我知道每個移民嘅人。喺兩年之內，佢哋個貧彷徨入邊，係需要依賴一啲，依賴就係上帝你啊，唔係依賴一個機構，依賴上帝你，一直度過。Once they pass over these two or three years, they will be settled down. There will be no more. They, there are no more interest. There will be less of interest about you. 我知道喺兩三年之後，當佢哋完全 settle down 嘅話，佢就冇個機會。I see the church growing in UK a few times. Unbelievable！ 我真係見到上帝，你俾英國嘅嘅華人教會嘅廣東話教會增長幾倍，你真係好大好大嘅大能，你帶緊一個好大嘅復興俾當地。Please, please use me. Please search me. Show me your plan. 求你真係體諒、體察、監察我哋，話俾我哋聽我哋點做。God, I know that. This is your time. 呢個就係你嘅上帝嘅時間。求你即係保守我哋一齊。I know that without this time, we can never, which is never, it's very hard for us to revive in you. 求你真係要我珍惜你嘅時間，等我喺你當中復興我哋嘅靈，俾我哋一齊嘅同工。Thank you, God. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I really, truly, I truly, I truly asking you to commit to these two places. Go there and serve there. 我真係希望你哋能夠真係去到嗰度服侍嗰度。I believe that your spiritual life will grow by then. 我相信你哋嘅屬靈嘅生命一定得一定係得到呢個高漲，一定係得到呢個喜樂。Now is the offering time. 而家奉獻時間。Offering is for those,、uh, to, for those who believe in God. 我知道大家都知道噶啦。奉獻係為基督徒而設嘅。For those who are non-believer or newcomer, please don't give. 如果你哋新朋友或者係未信主嘅人咧，希望你唔好俾
，等你真係捉到，就影響上帝捉摸到你嘅心靈，你先做啦。God really move this church for His place， 真係上帝真係捉到我哋嘅心，叫我哋去服侍佢。I would like you to join him with that。我希望你哋一齊聯手、同手、聯手嘅一齊做。Thank you, God. See you next week. God is moving. Can we sing this? You are here, moving in now, mist. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship. You, I worship you, 'cause you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Don't claim me, He is the waymaker. Come on, waymaker. See nature, see nature. Santa, Santa, oh, is our God. Oh, Santa, see nature. Just for some years, is our God. Oh, Santa. Even when, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop to believe it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Say it out if you believe it.
Thank you for coming, and we'll see you next week. Hello, bye, Chucky.